Hello there everybody, it is me Fizer Bunny and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So today we're building a very special build because we are building an underwater house. Um, so this is a very unique style of house. Um, it is obviously um, entirely located underwater. Um, but despite that, this is also a fully functional two bedroom, one bathroom house I imagine would be the perfect home for a marine biologist because this house also has a laboratory um, which I incorporated in a very very interesting way. Um, so this build does use one piece of custom content which is the effect player by Andrew Studio. Um, it is optional however because I will also upload a version of this build without CC and it'll basically work the exact same way. The only changes that um, having the CC would have is the fish and the way they are placed. So basically having the effect player gave me the ability to choose where to put the fish in the optimal locations whereas without the CC the fish kind of just get randomly generated um, but either way It'll still work 100% as a normal house. The only difference is this one is built underwater. Um, so I found this perfect place to put it here in Windenburg. Um, and I thought that this was just a perfect place because it, it was kind of like located in like the bay area of Windenburg. And I didn't really need to do a lot of changes to the exterior to make it blend with the outside because I think it already fit in really really well um, but I gotta say I know I've said this many times especially in my past couple of builds but I think this is probably one of my favorite builds I've ever done to be honest um, I think this is a very unique house and in terms of originality, this one definitely takes the cake. Um, not necessarily in a sense that this is the first underwater house in The Sims 4 because, you know, far from it. So many people have built underwater houses before, but most of the underwater houses I've seen were kind of like lake houses. I've never really seen one that was specifically built for the ocean. Which is what I was trying to do. Um, this one in particular is more for like a coral reef type area, which of course is very, very meaningful for me because in case you guys didn't know, I live in the Philippines, um, which is a country in Southeast Asia that has over 7,000 islands. And I'm so proud that my country has so many beautiful coral reefs. Um, while I was building this, I stumbled on a local documentary. It was called The Philippine Seas. It really opened my eyes to how rich the marine ecosystem in the Philippines was. But it also taught me a lot of things, especially about um, the environmental degradation that our country experiences. And after watching that documentary, I have officially been converted. I am now officially only using metal straws. Um, and I believe that small actions like these really do help the environment. So if you guys are still using plastic straws, maybe you would consider um, switching to metal straws because it really helps the environment. Nobody's paying me to say this. I'm just saying it because I'm passionate about conservation, whether it's historical conservation and architecture or whether it's in environmental conservation. I think we all could do our part to make a better world. That sounded so cliche, but anyway, back to the build. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this house. I, um, I, I still went for somewhat of a realistic look, even though this is definitely more of a creative build. You guys know that, especially in recent builds, I do tend to lean towards the more realistic side in terms of proportion, in terms of my choices in general. Um, but I think that overall this one actually looks really realistic. Um, I did look at some 
reference images online. Um, apologies if you guys can hear that motorcycle passing by outside. Apparently, the avenue outside of my apartment is now a racetrack. Hmm. Anyway, um, but yeah, I still went for something that was very realistic. So overall, I went for this really compact shape. Compact meaning everything is kind of like very small and close together. I didn't want this to be like an impossible underwater city. I still wanted it to feel like your normal, well, quote unquote normal modern house. The only difference is that this one is underwater and it has beautiful views of the beautiful marine life that live and surround it. Um, but yeah, um, overall, um, I, I'm really, really, really happy with this. I made good use of the glass roofs. I think that even though we can have the house completely underwater, the glass roofs has this effect because the sky is also blue. It kind of makes it look like we're still underwater in a sense, so I really like that. Um, but yeah, the house itself is completely underwater. Um, and the only thing that is actually above water is the roof, um, or the domes or something like that. I tried to actually build, um, an octagonal shape at first, but it doesn't work for some strange reason. The roof just doesn't work. You guys probably saw, like, in the first minute of this video, I tried to build, like, some interesting shapes, but they didn't work out, so I ended up with a more boxy look. But I'm still really, really happy with it. Um, in just a little bit, you guys will see me actually incorporate some diagonal pieces to this as well. Just to, you know, um, just lessen the whole boxy aspect. And yeah, um, like this was this was so much fun. Uh, by the way, um, for those of you guys who have no idea how I used the effect player mod, I made a tutorial uh, a couple of days ago on how to make custom aquarium setups on The Sims 4. So if you want an in-depth tutorial explanation on how I exactly use that mod, um, feel free to check that tutorial out. To be honest, I only filmed that tutorial so that I could refer to you guys who are interested to have an in-depth tutorial on that mod. But oh my gosh, this is where I built this fun little under underwater laboratory i say under under because it's actually underneath the sand that is underwater i don't even know but it's fun um i wanted to add that kind of like additional little space because i wanted to have a room where you know the sims could look above and they would actually see fish above them so that's the idea behind that laboratory area but yeah, for the most part, I kind of just used a lot of wood textures and tile. Um, the interior, I, I like to refer to it as kind of like a no-nonsense interior because I really didn't like um, do too much crazy stuff on the interior because I really wanted this to be about the coral reef and the fishes outside. Oh, so this is the part where I was incorporating some diagonal elements, keeping in mind the views that would be had inside. So I kind of just strategically placed these like windows to open up to, you know, the parts of the underwater that had the best views and later on you guys will see me actually when I'm placing the fish I kind of like place them in areas that they could be viewed properly um, which is another really helpful thing that the mod gives me the power to do so but um, for the kitchen area I actually tried to do this a couple times. Um, this is probably my second or third attempt at doing the kitchen. The first couple times was really bad. I wasn't. I really wasn't happy with it. So um, this one is a little bit different because the kitchen, some parts of it are on a diagonal. And doing this kitchen reminded me so much of another build I did a very, very long time ago. It was the Terrace Resort Apartment. It was one of my most popular builds. But this kitchen has a very similar shape to that one. So I actually tried different shapes and I, I felt like this one really, 
you know, really worked for this house. Um, and then basically we have a great room uh, where in the living room, kitchen and dining rooms are all together in one room. Um, I, To be honest, there's really not much of a dining room for this one. It's actually just two dining chairs, which is fine. Um, I imagine, you know, people living here probably wouldn't have too many parties and social events anyway. Oh my gosh, by the way, I really, really love that coffee table. It came with seasons and it's so beautiful. Like, I like the modern, like, vibe that it has. It's really awesome. Um, so I felt like the interior for this great room was a little bit flat, so I added in this kind of like, I don't know what this is called, like a truss thing, um, for where like hanging lights over the kitchen counters could hang from. Yeah, I really think of those. I it, It's such a pet peeve of mine to see lights that are attached to nothing. Um, so in this case, I made sure to put the lights um, where they would look like they were attached to the glass roofs. So that took a lot of time, but I was really happy with how it looked. Once again, for the interior, I kept it pretty streamlined, I kept it pretty minimalist, and I kept it pretty quote-unquote no-nonsense because I just really wanted all the focus to focus on the fish and on the marine life and on the beautiful like coral, coral arrangements and stuff like that. Um, I also wanted to try to include this fish sculpture because I mean, like there's no better build to have this fish sculpture than this one, you know, having in these metal artificial fish face to face with actual fish. Um, but I find a better place for it later on, but I instead do this technique that I actually really like where I put these um, plants in threes and I also included some parts of me just putting in the clutter because I felt like this really humanizes the build. Um, and speaking of humanizing the build, basically the idea for this build is that it would be like a house for a marine biologist who kind of stays here for extended periods of time doing their research and observing the fish in their natural habitat. And basically, um, in this house, there would also be some marine biology interns, um, which is why I made this kind of like extra guest room or whatever for the interns to, to stay at when they are helping out with our lead marine biologist, if that makes any sense. Um, so we have two guest beds over here and then also like a little office area for our intern. Um, and yeah, this room also has a glass roof as well. I'm not sure if you guys caught that while I was building it um, a couple minutes ago. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really, really enjoyed furnishing this. I was just super excited to, you know, start work on putting in the rock formations and the corals and the fish. I didn't use any custom content other than the effect players. So all of the rock formations, all of the rocks and all of the corals and all of the fish they actually came with the game. I will talk a little bit more about that later on. I thought that it was also really funny and ironic to have this fish bowl over here. Um, yeah, I might put a goldfish over there. I, I don't know, this just reminds me of Tantalus, you know, tantalizingly close to the freedom of the ocean, but still trapped inside a bowl. Anyway, um, working on the master bedroom, I think this is probably one of my favorite rooms in the entire house together with the great room. The master bedroom just has amazing, amazing views of the underwater environment. And um, I was so caught up in envisioning in my mind what this place was gonna look like when I had put in the corals and the rocks that I actually forgot to put a closet um, or to at least make space for a closet but um, yeah you guys just saw me make kind of like an improvised day bed the sims can actually nap on that I thought that that was just a really nice kind of like little nook to have like a day bed slash 
kind of like underwater bay window type of thing. Um, so yeah, I also made sure to add in a little office area for our marine biologist. So um, this is where I realized I didn't put a closet. So really quickly, I do something about it and include a walk-in closet instead. What this room doesn't have that normally most of my rooms do have is a mirror. I couldn't find any place to put a mirror where it would make sense. So I'm just telling myself that there is a mirror inside of the walk-in closet. It is big enough to, you know, be able to contain a mirror inside of it. And of course, I also put this nice little um, cork board for postcards so that if our marine biologist is ever feeling lonely or seasick, <laughs> homesick, they could just look at the postcards in their office area. And right now we're working on the bathroom. I really, really enjoyed working on this. I put a lot of base game, actually. I think most of the bathroom fixtures are base game, but I felt like they made sense. Um, once again, I just kept it pretty no-nonsense. Very, very minimal clutter and mostly built-in stuff. I really like that light that came with Seasons I put over the sinks. Um, so yeah, for the bedrooms, I used some... I know I'm only talking about this now, but um, you guys probably noticed that I used some counter cabinets to make it kind of like surfaces or something like that. Like, you know, bedside tables, but they're built in. I wanted the beds to look really built in. And this is probably the only piece of artwork we're gonna have in this entire house once again. Um, but I thought it would be a really nice piece that was actually a painting of a coral reef, which I thought was very, very appropriate for this build as well. Um, so this right here is kind of like a top secret lab. You guys will see that in the hallway leading up to it, there are some security cameras. Um, but yeah, it's not a big space, um, but it is enough space for our marine biologists to do their experiments and stuff. Um, I haven't tested this out yet, but this is probably gonna work if you have a scientist, you know, if you have get together. Uh, no, I mean get to work, blah. Uh, yeah, this is probably gonna work as a place for a scientist. Speaking of scientists, how awesome would it be to like make over the science lab to make it into an underwater science lab? I was honestly like thinking about it, contemplating on whether I was gonna do it. But anyway, for the science lab, I also used um, by debug to put in some, I guess, organisms. Uh, I put some aliens. These are actually aliens, I believe, that would come with Sixum or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, I wanted those to look like they were kind of like fish specimens or something like that. So um, yeah, for the interior, it went by really, really fast. There weren't that many rooms to furnish and there really wasn't a lot of clutter to take up too, too much time. So now we are working on the coral reef slash underwater area of this build, which I guess pretty much is equivalent to uh, landscaping. <laughs> so I kept as much of it in as I can. So a lot of the rock formations I kept in and doing these rock formations actually reminded me so much of my childhood. Um, growing up in the rural area of the Philippines, um, my dad, he loved to, um, he has this hobby of keeping bonsais and basically our house was essentially like a Japanese garden because he would put like a, a lot of like different rock formations, like he would make these like rock sculptures together with his bonsai trees. And one particular rock formation in our garden reminded me so much of Pride Rock. So I had this thing when I was younger of just making my own like role play, I guess, game where I would like have these plastic animals and I would play with them in Pride Rock, the one located in our garden. And doing this rock formations really reminded me of my younger self, just putting on bits and pieces of rocks that I found at home and making it look like Pride Rock from The Lion King. Um, so yeah, um, I did go for a more sculptural look for the 
rock formations. It's a little bit stylized, but I actually really, really like the look overall. I think it's it's pretty it's pretty sculptural, if I do say so myself. Um, so yes, I, I spent a lot of time really choosing the appropriate kind of rock to go um, on the appropriate spot. I also put in some ruins as well. Um, I don't know why, it's, it's Atlantis basically, that's the reference for that. I really really enjoyed the movie Atlantis, it was the Disney cartoon Atlantis. Uh, I, I really really- it's such an underrated movie too, but they played it so much on the Disney Channel. I really really enjoyed watching that growing up, so um, putting in those ruins that came with Get Together really brought me back. And now we're putting in my version of what corals are in The Sims 4. Um, these are actually plants that can be unlocked if you type in the show hidden objects sheet. They are in the debug category and basically I kind of just mix them in with some romantic garden plants as well as some seaweed to make it look like a realistic underwater environment. Um, so these plants I believe are decorative plants that would come with the alien planet in the Sims 4 get to work planet 6 sim. Um, so I kind of just plop them in some nice little corners. Once again, utilizing the views from the windows to determine where I placed the individual plants because I, I wanted, of course, the windows to have a view of the plants because basically the areas where there wasn't any windows, I didn't put any plants because I didn't really feel like it made sense. So yeah. I really really enjoyed putting in these mushrooms. They reminded me so much of corals and yeah, it's 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 so much fun to do this. Um, I'm really happy that those flowers that came with Romantic Garden have some very interesting out of this world color swatches because because of that I was able to use them quite a lot in this build. Like um, just by having different colors of those, I think really, really changes the effect for the better. And I think for this last couple of parts, you guys can see me actually place in the different fish. So you guys can see this item that I'm placing right now are some like orange plum bob looking things. Each one of these represents a fish. So um, I made an in-depth tutorial on how to do this. Um, a couple days ago. I will link that in the description as well as the download link for the effect player by Andrew Studio. But basically, um, this is just me placing in the individual fish. In this case, I placed in some uh, a school of angel fish, but I think there's so many different varieties of fish as well, such as lionfish or some squid. On the kitchen area, I put some salmon and some tuna and then kitch lids. What else? Um, and all of that stuff. But my favorite fish by far is the discus, which is why I put them right next to the bedroom. So I put this like school of discus fish um, because I wanted them to have that visual impact. They look so beautiful. They're basically this purple fish and they're just really, really beautiful. Um, I also put some electric eels as well and some non-fish that are still considered marine life such as crawdads which are basically just lobsters or you know <laughs> crustaceans i i put so many fish like i easily like three dozen there's some puffer fish um some fish are individual some fish are in you know in 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 schools um, but I think that should pretty much be it for this build. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this very unique and special build. I definitely had so much fun doing it. Um, and hopefully you guys can help support the channel by subscribing, sharing the video, leaving a like, and leaving a comment as well, telling me what you guys thought. So that is going to be it for my commentary. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!